Welcome to the second seminar in the Henry VII series. In this video, we will be focusing on the exam skills necessary to complete the extract evaluation question. In the exam, you will have three extracts to evaluate rather than one. This means the skills that I show you in this seminar needs to become instinctive. However, I find that while you are still learning how to use these skills, it is worth being mindful and methodical with each step you make in the process. The process will be divided into four sections. Firstly, we will unpick the question to understand what is truly being asked of you. Secondly, I am going to ask you to visualize the extract, as this helps to understand the overall argument made by the historian. Then will you place this in the wider context of Henry's reign using your own knowledge. Finally, you need to evaluate the merits of the extract based upon your understanding of the historical topic. Let's start with unpicking the question, spend one minute reading and considering what is required of you. The question stem will remain the same regardless of what is asked. But it is still worth being mindful of the phrasing. In order to focus your response, the phrase, how convincing essentially means, do you agree with what is being said within the extract? Does it match with what you have learnt about the topic? Can you think of evidence to support this extract's argument? The next important part of the question is the requirement for your own historical understanding. This requires you to cross-reference what the extract says with what you have learnt. Never assume the examiner knows what you mean, it is worth taking the time to fully explain your contextual knowledge, however this needs to be balanced with the requirement to remain focused on the extract. Avoid writing at length about a topic without tying it back to the extract. This final line is the only part of the question that will change, it is worth paying particular attention to this. For example, the phrase method of ruling means your focus is going to be on Henry VII as king, the decisions he made and the way in which he ran his government. Every extract is a paragraph long, never say the extract is unconvincing if it does not include key facts or evidence, or if it focuses on one topic rather than another. It is one paragraph a portion from an entire book or journal article. The historian could well have gone on to discuss that topic in the following paragraph. Your focus needs to be on the historian's interpretation of the ruler or events at hand. The provenance, who wrote the extract, and when they made it is not important to this question, you may recognize the name of the historian but you will not be credited for discussing their views beyond the extract. Unless it directly ties into the extract's argument. However it's sometimes useful to look at the date the extract was written in order to understand whether the view is traditional or revisionist. Traditional views are usually written in the Victorian age or early 20th century, whilst revisionist historians come from 1970 onwards. However, do not get hung up over this, focus on what is said in the extract and its key arguments. Now we have unpicked the question. Let's examine the extract itself. This is the point where it might be useful to have paper and a pen or pencil to hand, so that you are literally drawing what is being described in the extract. Note that I have greyed out the provenance. The focus will be on the content of the extract, as the extract is being read to you. I want you to try to visualize the scene, draw what you imagine, even if it is messy stick men. The extract reads, Henry VII's attitude to ruling was, for the most part, 
similar to that of his predecessors, he believed in the imposition of strong and unquestioned royal leadership. This was particularly needed in England after an interval of instability in which the authority of the crown had been badly damaged. However, Henry's own background also made demands on him. Henry Tudor was a stranger in England when he ascended the throne, having won that throne by conquest, thrust into this position. By the events of a single afternoon, Henry had to master the realm he now ruled. Henry had no immediate relations whose services he could employ nor a reliable body of nobles he could turn to. What he did, he had to do on his own. When I listen to this extract, I imagine Henry VII sat on a throne with the sun shining upon him a symbol of his strong royal authority. I imagine a snow blizzard in the background to show the turbulent background of the Wars of the Roses. At his feet are the red roses of the House of Lancaster to show his victory at the Battle of Bosworth. But of course he sits on the throne alone, because at the start of his reign he did not have a power base in England. Now that you have visualized the extract, I want you to break it down into distinct sections each of which you could discuss in an essay. Firstly I want you to read the extract and consider the question, what is the main argument? You have one minute to think about this. Usually, but not always, the main argument comes in the first sentence. Henry VII's attitude to ruling was for the most part similar to that of his predecessors. This therefore suggests that Henry ruled as a late medieval king rather than as a Renaissance king. I now want you to focus in on specific quotes that provide a description of Henry as a ruler and I want you to make inferences from these. In other words, what does the quote suggest about Henry as a ruler? You have two minutes to do this.
The first quote I have identified is, he believed in the imposition of strong and unquestioned royal leadership, this suggests that Henry was an authoritarian king. The second quote is, Henry was a stranger in England when he ascended the throne having won that throne by conquest, this suggests that Henry did not know the country he now ruled. Finally I have taken the last sentence, what he did, he had to do on his own, this suggests that he ruled England alone, without the support of close advisors or ministers, in the exam. You will complete these steps much faster, and you will ultimately need to select two important quotes to discuss in your evaluation. Now we have thoroughly examined the extract, let's place it within our contextual knowledge. You have one minute to now consider what is the most important thing to remember about Henry as king. The most important thing is that Henry was a usurper, he had a tenuous claim to the crown through his mother Margaret Beaufort and he had to strengthen this claim through his marriage to Elizabeth of York, and the birth of their son Arthur in 1486. Furthermore his right to rule was a right by conquest, he had to win two battles, firstly Battle of Bosworth where he defeated Richard III and secondly the Battle of Stoke Field where he defeated Richard's heir presumptive the Earl of Lincoln. Considering this historical context, spend two minutes thinking about how Henry acted as a ruler. The traditional view was that Henry followed a model of personal monarchy whereby he kept close control of government. He remained paranoid of Yorkist threats throughout his reign and so was miserly with his finance, looking to hoard his wealth for security purposes. 
He only ever relied on a close-knit circle of advisors, including his mother and those who supported him prior to Bosworth. Since the rest of the nobility were Yorkist, he had a poor relationship with them and sought to curb their influence and power. However, many historians have challenged this traditional opinion in what is called a revisionist view. They point to the arrival of Renaissance influences like Polydor Vigil and Desiderius Erasmus as a signal that England was moving out of the Middle Ages and into a more modern era. Henry also looked to employ new men in positions of power, especially the role of the justices of the peace, and did invest money in prestigious building projects like Richmond Palace. Furthermore, there is Evidence that he kept a stable and steady relationship with the nobility, for example many of the acts of attainder were evoked after the Yorkist nobles had proven loyalty, the Earl of Surrey is a good example of this. Now we have considered both the extract and the historical context, you need to evaluate the merits of the extract based on your understanding. Let's go back to the main argument first, you have one minute to consider whether or not you believe Henry followed a late medieval model of kingship. Personally, I agree, Henry was a warrior king first and foremost, and this fits the late medieval model of kingship, it was only in the final decade of his reign that you could see the arrival of the Renaissance at his court. Now spend a minute selecting another quote and deciding whether or not this fits with your understanding of Henry as a ruler. I have picked this quote, especially focusing on the phrase strong and unquestioned royal leadership, and linked this to how Henry used acts of parliament at the start of his reign to impose his royal authority. Let's now put this together into an answer using the what, how, why structure. Firstly you have a minute to write an opening sentence, use your opening point to answer, what makes the extract convincing or unconvincing.
I have written the following. Extract 1 is somewhat convincing because at the start of his reign Henry used Parliament to impose strong and unquestioned leadership. Note the use of somewhat, this suggests a degree of judgment. I have also used a short, embedded quote to show engagement with the extract material. Now spend two minutes considering how can I link this to my wider contextual knowledge. Write two sentences of succinct and precise facts. I have written the following. In Henry's first parliament he used the act of attainder to strip Yorkist nobles of their lands and titles and the act of resumption to reclaim land from Yorkists that had been originally part of the Duchy of Lancaster. Two years later he also introduced the act of retainder which prevented nobles from having a private army. This shows a good range of knowledge about how Henry used parliament to impose his unquestioned leadership. Finally it is time to evaluate the extract, I want you to consider why you find the extract either convincing or unconvincing, remember you can show a degree of judgment. You do not have to fully agree or disagree with the historian's viewpoint, spend three minutes writing three sentences.
I have written the following. This use of parliamentary legislation could be used to argue that Henry was imposing his royal will, so that it became treason to question his legitimacy as King of England. However, one could argue that these measures were short-term, so to bring stability to the country after 50 years of civil war. Many nobles were able to regain their lands and titles by proving their loyalty to the new regime, such as the Earl of Surrey, who served as President of the North in the 1590s. Furthermore, it wasn't until after 1503 that Henry started to use the council learned to impose. Bonds and recognizances on the nobility, which resulted in his reputation as a tyrannical king. This response fully evaluates the argument being made in the extract. It pinpoints the moments during Henry's reign where he imposed unquestioned royal leadership. You can see when joining these three components together how they create a cohesive and fully evaluative response. This takes practice and I would recommend practicing this in a slow and mindful way before practicing it under timed conditions. Now repeat the same what, how, and why, to consider a second part of the extract, personally I would focus on this final sentence of, what he did he had to do on his own. There is evidence of things he did do alone, but there is also lots of evidence of instances when he relied on others. Thank you for watching. Tune into my other videos to learn the core content required for your Tudors course alongside other videos like this that focus in on exam skills.